Okay, so we just talked about the value chain analysis as a basis for trying to figure out what our, uh, you know, resources and capabilities are that we can apply to um, obtain competitive advantage. And we looked at the various stages of this oil industry value chain. And, you know, we should note that uh, there are companies that would be able to um, perform each of these stages. And some companies that can perform many of these stages. But the point is that, you know, companies that are able to uh, perform each of these activities at, at the various stages, uh, the ones that can perform them the best and at the highest profit, those are the ones that should be doing this. Uh, you know, the companies that have unique capabilities to perform these various activities at each stage, those are the ones that will, will be able to do it and uh, should be doing it and should be contracted out to do that. Some you know, like B, you know, British Petroleum, BP, uh, Exxon, they have the capabilities to, to perform, uh, you know, many of these different stages. Other ones, like, for example, are specialists at exploring for crude oil. And those are the ones that should be, you know, given that task because they have developed these unique capabilities. This uh, is very, you know, specific to this particular value chain, but uh, you know, we need a, a more general approach that we can apply to examining the value chain activities uh, for many different companies or for, you know, it, it needs to be general to apply it to um, other, other types of industries, right? So McKinsey, the consulting firm, they developed this generic value chain that, you know, kind of separates each of these value adding activities and allows companies to kind of um, uh, look and see what their distinctive capabilities are and, and develop those capabilities. So they, McKinsey, you know, they, they note that creation of value almost always involves these six activities, but that companies you know, develop distinctive capabilities in any of these areas. Uh, well, this is an improvement, right? It allows us to look at, uh, you know, many different companies in different industries and identify these value adding activities and figure out what those uh, resources and capabilities are that contribute to those particular activities. Uh, of course, um, Porter goes even farther and provides a generic value chain kind of um, uh, approach to studying it. And he separates it into two types of activities, support activities and primary activities. Primary activities are the ones that transform, uh, you know, uh, inbound uh, you know, resources, inbound, you know, um, you know, things like um, uh, components, uh, raw materials, you know, inbound materials, let's call them, whether they be, you know, raw materials or semi-finished goods or finished goods. And then through various activities, which he calls primary activities, that add value to that you know, inbound stuff and transforms it somehow into higher value outputs that are sellable uh, to customers. So we have these primary activities that are kind of value adding activities. And then we have support activities, which support, you know, are all the activities that are supporting the, these value adding primary activities. Uh, you know, all companies have these support activities, right? Things like um, planning and finance and MIS or HR, you know, human resources management, technology development, procurement. But 
the primary activities would differ from industry to industry. Uh, but still, the, 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 the goal of the primary activities is value adding, you know, actually the goal of all the activities in a company are to um, try to increase M. What do you think M is, right? Think that the, the difference between the cost, right, the cost that we pay for things like inbound logistics costs, you know, inbound materials, uh, and to transform them into sellable outputs, all these costs that are coming in, and then the price that we charge for them going out, the difference between that buying inbound cost price and the outbound selling price, you know, including all the costs, not just the cost of materials, but that that's what you know Porter labels as M or margin. So we're trying to maximize the margin, the profits basically, and in this way add value to the company, right? We add value to the inbound materials, the you know, the goods that we're buying, and we somehow process it, add value, and then sell it to our customers. It's important to note that each of these you know, primary activities is, you know, uh, comprised of components and subcomponents and sub processes. It's not just as simple as saying, well, you know, marketing is our primary activity. That's our primary capability. But it's, you know, we need to remember that it in itself is composed of many sub processes and sub components. Like to be good at marketing, what do you need to do? Well, you need to be good at Things like consumer research, um, brand management, uh, strategic marketing, uh, coordinating the marketing department in with internal other business processes, but also with external partners, making marketing central to the organization, having a, a customer focused or customer centric um, corporate culture. Um, managing, you know, external partners, having a uh, great um, marketing communications programs. So, you know, all these things make up marketing and are what allow marketing to be a competitive or to be used for competitive advantage, right? So some companies like Nike and Procter & Gamble are excellent at marketing. And that's kind of the basis of their competitive advantage. Uh, so, you know, if we use this properly, you know, it can be kind of, you know, if you look at this um, diagram, you know, this kind of uh, Porter generic value chain, it always reminded me of a, um, oh, there's, yeah, margin. So M is for margin. But this, this thing always reminded me of a, a kind of a rocket, right? It kind of looks like a rocket. If you use it properly, it can kind of propel your firm to greater heights. Anyway, that's kind of silly. Okay, so um, this is the Porter generic value chain. This helps us to identify our resources and capabilities, right? That's what we're looking for. But after we identify them, we have to figure out which ones of these resources and capabilities Okay, sorry about that. I got a message while on the a call while I was uh, recording this. Back to the question of, you know, now that we've identified these resources and capabilities, how do we figure out which ones are the most uh, important for achieving competitive advantage, right? We don't just make a list for no reason. We want to try to analyze our capabilities and use those for a purpose, right? For making our company as strong as possible. So we can use this VRIO framework. And this framework is used to analyze resources and capabilities of the firm in terms of their potential for generating competitive advantage. And it answers these, you know, it does so by answering these four questions. And you can try to guess what V is, stands for, what R stands for, what I stands for, what O stands for. So V, what does V stand for? 
Well, it answers the question of value. Does the resource enable our firm to exploit an opportunity and or neutralize a threat? So is it valuable? Is this resource valuable to us, enabling us to do this? Does it ex allow us to exploit an opportunity or neutralize a threat? So after we've determined that this resource does have a value, the next question is R. What is R? The question of rarity. Is the resource controlled only by a small number of firms you know is it kind of unique is this resource valuable and is it rare is it only controlled by a small number of firms after we've determined that well is it valuable is it rare the next question is i we'll never guess what i stands for but and you may not even be able to pronounce it but it's uh the question of inimitability do firms without this resource face high costs in obtaining it or in developing it? That is, is it inimitable? Can it not be imitated? It's, you have, it's got a strong value, it's rare, but can it be imitated or can it not be imitated? You know, is it inimitable? Do firms without it, you know, is it very difficult for those firms to acquire it or to develop it? And the next question is organization. Remember that resources and capabilities can only be, uh, you know, only be um, useful if they're if the firm is organized to allow those resources and capabilities to be brought to bear, you know, to be used uh, for strategic advantage. So, are the firm's other policies and procedures organized to support? exploitation of these valuable, rare, and costly to imitate resources. So this is the VRIO framework, and to summarize it, you know, we can say that the implications of VRIO uh, for sustainable competitive advantage, so is the resource or the capability valuable? No. Rare? No. Difficult to imitate? No and without substitutes no so the implications for competitiveness in this case is this resource going to add to our competitiveness no in fact it's a disadvantage if it's just you know not valuable not rare not difficult to imitate not without substitutes and well is it valuable yes is it rare no the difficult to imitate no and it's without substitutes well the implications for competitiveness is that it's just competitive parity that is it's like needed to play the game you know it's like you you need it to in order to be in this industry and be um just able to compete but it doesn't offer you any competitive advantage it means that we're all equal competitive parity everybody's on the same level so is the resource or capability valuable and is it rare? Yes and yes, but if it's not difficult to imitate and it's not without substitutes, what this means is that, well, it gives us a temporary advantage. It's valuable and it's rare. It's only owned by a few companies, but it's able to be copied relatively easily or substituted for. And then finally, is a resource valuable? Yes, it's rare, yes. It's also costly to imitate. It's difficult to imitate. It's difficult to acquire. And it also has no substitutes. And in that case, yes, it gives a sustainable competitive advantage. But there's something here that you should ask. Well, what's that star for, Hoja? That star for implications for competitive means, competitiveness means it has to be organized Remember, all the other firms, other resources, and, and other interdependent processes need to be organized in order to uh, use them, use this resource for competitive advantage. So this is the summary of this VRIO framework. It's very useful if you're, you know, trying to understand your sources of competitive advantage and which ones are most important. So I'm going to close this 15-minute segment here, and we'll come back in uh and, and and you know do the next 15 minutes